Are these popular Disney World restaurants worth the hype? Let's find out. Hey, ma'am fam, and welcome back to another most popular restaurants in Disney World video, this time, quick service edition. I am headed to all four Walt Disney World parks today to eat at the most popular quick service restaurant in each park. Is it worth the hype? Is it worth the popularity? Is it worth the wait? How good's the food? We're gonna find all of that out. Plus, I'll share some tips and tricks and maybe some underrated dining locations that you might wanna visit. So, I know I'm hungry, I hope you are too. Let's go have some fun. Starting our day off in Animal Kingdom. Wait, I've been distracted. There's new Animal Kingdom ears and I must evaluate. You know, online, I didn't think I liked them, but in person, I like them a lot more. Let's say Disney's Animal Kingdom on the side. The ears have like different animal patterns. I may be making a purchase on my way out of this park. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> There are several popular quick service locations here in Animal Kingdom. We're passing one right here, Pizza Fari. That's the home of the Puffy Pizza here. You've got Flame Tree Barbecue near the Tree of Life, which is obviously barbecue. You've got Restaurantosaurus in Dino Land, which is your kind of classic theme park pair, like burgers or chicken nuggets. And then you've got some more underrated places like Harambe Market, which is in Africa and has uh, different African-inspired bowls and salads and chicken. It's actually quite tasty. Uh, you've also got the Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe, which is the quick service of Yak and Yeti in Asia, which has some like Americanized Chinese dishes. But we're not going to any of those. We are headed into Pandora, the world of Avatar, for what I believe to be the most popular restaurant here. Welcome to the Moara Valley and Pandora, the world of Avatar, TM, presented by James Cameron. This is a truly incredibly beautiful land. I mean, these floating mountains make my jaw drop every single time. It's also home to the most popular attraction in the park, which is Avatar Flight of Passage. So it's no surprise that the quick service restaurant is also the most popular. Not only is this a land that everybody wants to go to just because of how beautiful and unique it is, but popular attractions tend to draw a lot of people and therefore the dining locations could be popular too in most cases. Made it to Satuli Canteen, just waiting for my mobile order to be ready. Highly recommend using mobile order at these most popular restaurants as it'll cut down on your wait time. Also recommend not eating at peak meal time since these are already popular. Even if you mobile order, uh, you may end up waiting a little bit for your food just because that's when everybody's eating. So if you can eat early or late for both lunch and dinner, that is a great tip. But Satuli Canteen, I love that this is considered one of the most popular restaurants in Walt Disney World because it is absolutely worth it. In my opinion. It is very unique. The main things that they offer are customizable bowls where you'll select a base and then a protein and then a sauce. They also will do, they have an ahi tuna bowl. They have cheeseburger pods, which are my, like one of my favorite foods of all time. It's just really unique and not something you're going to see a lot of other places, especially not in theme parks. So let's get in there. My mobile order is ready and I'm headed in. First thing I want to point out that makes this, I think the best quick service restaurant in the park is look at all the fresh food they're making. This is your grill that they're grilling the meats for the different bowls and things on. So they've got chicken going right now. You'll see steak. I'm watching the cast member prepare some shrimp. Like this is not your average park food. Now you can still go to a regular cash register if you want to pay cash or you've got an allergy concern, want to talk to a cast member about. Uh, but just keep in mind that at several restaurants, the line can get pretty long for paying at the register. So I do recommend using mobile order when you can. You can customize a lot of stuff in the app as well. And there's also an allergy guide within the app. Now the theme of Satuli Canteen and Pandora in general is that this is after the first Avatar movie. Don't ask me about Way of Water. I have still not seen it. Sorry. But Basically, after the humans did all the bad stuff, they tried to rebuild and the RDA, which were the bad military guys in the first movie, have been kicked out. And now Centur uh, Alpha Centauri Expeditions, Ace, are the good guys here establishing tourism on Pandora. Why does Pandora need tourism? I don't know, but we're going to roll with it. However, this building specifically was the commissary for those RDA military uh, people when they were here. So you're going to see kind of a combination of the natural design from the Navi people and from Ace, as well as the very military concrete design from the RDA. Uh, and it's really fun. One of my favorite Easter eggs in all of Disney World is in here, because if you look in some of these pictures of people enjoying time with the Navi, you might recognize some familiar faces. Yes, that is Imagineer Joe Rohde. Picked up my food and let's start with the big one. This is one of the customizable bowls. Again, you pick your base. I picked the uh, sweet and red potato base. There's also noodles. Uh, there is also red beans and rice and there's also a vegetable salad. Picked my protein, I went for the chicken. You can also do steak, you can also do shrimp, you can also do uh, chili spice tofu, and then you pick your sauce. This is the um, charred green onion vinaigrette, but I also got the black bean vinaigrette on the side so that I could try both. And then of course, 
obviously I'm not coming into this restaurant and not getting a cheeseburger pod. This is the kids portion, so you only get one cheeseburger pod. And then you get to choose your sides. I chose chips and a cutie. And then kids' meals also come with a small drink. So I like grabbing the little baby bottle of water to throw in my bag for later. Um, or you can get a Powerade or soda, whatever you'd like. Cheeseburger pods, basically a bow bun full of everything you want in a cheeseburger, like a Big Mac. It's got ground beef. It's got onion. It's got cheese. Um, and then you got to get a side of the creamy herb dressing, which is uh, Pandora Ranch. This is available for adults as well, where it'll come with two of the cheeseburger pods. But I find the kids' meal is a perfect portion for a light lunch or a great snack. So let's dig it. Here we go. There's my bite. I really like the beef. I haven't had the chicken in a while, but I figured since I've got the beef bow bun, I'd mix it up. I almost forgot how amazing these bowls are because I obviously always get cheeseburger pods, but they are really fantastic. The chicken is phenomenal. And I know you're like, it's just grilled chicken, but it's better than just grilled chicken. It's really moist. It's got a ton of flavor. You can tell that it came off a wood fire grill because it's got that smokiness. Potatoes are cooked perfectly. A little bit of crunchiness on the outside, but not underdone in any way. And then I love this uh, charred green onion vinaigrette. I think it adds a little bit of zest and acidity and herbaceousness. But I like the black bean one as well. So that's just kind of a personal preference thing. I think the green onion is my favorite though. But yeah, I got to give it to the bowls. I also like the slaw on top for a little texture difference. This is, again, not your average theme park food. And the, uh, yeah, they're fantastic. But let's talk about the real reason we're all here, the cheeseburger pod. They're just so delicious. They're perfect every time. I love the kind of chewy dough of the bow itself. And then you've got this tasty beef mixture in there. I do, again, you gotta get the creamy herb dressing. Otherwise it can be a little bit on the drier side, but the creamy herb adds a little bit of zestiness. I like the chips that come with it. Very simple flavors, but presented in a really fun way. Actually, based on Joe Rohde, the lead Imagineer of this park and this land specifically, based on his family recipe for Sloppy Joe's. So how can you beat that? I think it goes without saying, absolutely worth the hype, worth how popular it is. Not only is it incredibly uniquely themed in this space, you're in the most recent land in Animal Kingdom. You're in this incredibly immersive environment that has such a story to tell. You've got the beautiful music going. It's just so cool in here, but the food is excellent. It is definitely a step up from classic theme park food. You're not gonna find something like this anywhere else. It's a little bit intimidating, I think, if you've got really picky eaters, but then you've got familiar flavors like the cheeseburger pod. On the kids' menu, there's also like a cheese quesadilla, but I, I love this restaurant. I absolutely think this is worth being the most popular one. I would say it's this one tied with flame tree barbecue, but we're off to a good start. Now, belly full of delicious Satuli Canteen treats. I do gotta say, I'm not eating all this alone. It's a confession I have to make behind the scenes. My mom's here. She's not an on-camera kind of lady though, but there's her pink sweater because she's also a Barbie girl. Anyway, so mom and I are having a nice day, eating a lot of delicious food, and in between all of our feedings, we're gonna be enjoying nice times in the park, so we spread out how much we eat. So uh, I'm gonna take you with us as well on our lovely day here in Walt Disney World. Next up, Africa. Park one done, headed to number two. A beautiful late morning, early afternoon at my favorite park. But now we are off. See you there. We've made it to park number two, friends. We are at the Magic Kingdom where we're headed to a quick service restaurant that is so popular that at one point it was the number two burger selling fast food restaurant in the world. And by the world, I do not mean the Walt Disney World, I mean Planet Earth. Any guesses? If you guessed Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe, you are correct. This is an absolutely massive quick service restaurant and it's pretty much always busy. 
Now this one is gonna be a little bit more of your typical theme park fare. They're known for having burgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken tenders. Once upon a time, anyone else remember this? The different bays, there's bay one, two, and three, all had different menus. And like one of them you could do like pot roast and fried chicken and green beans. There's like more traditional kind of like comfort food. And then one had burgers. And I think one had pastas maybe, but that's been like since I was a little kid. Um, now it's all the same thing. I highly recommend mobile ordering here. Uh, but as a little pro tip, you can actually modify your mobile order time if you realize you're not going to make it. On my way in, I got distracted by Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair, the really cute show on the castle stage. Realized I was going to be late for my mobile order, so I just changed my arrival time. As long as there's availability, you can adjust your mobile order pickup time. You can push it back or pull it forward depending on what time it's set for. So that's a great way to add some flexibility into your day. Now there is one main reason to come to Cosmic Rays and it's not the food. It is of course the intergalactic jazz singer of our dreams, Sunny Eclipse. There is an animatronic crooner here in the main indoor seating area of Cosmic Rays and it, he's obviously my favorite part. As a note, always watch his little feet because they don't hit the ground and he kicks them in delight as he's singing. And I like to watch his Eugene Levy eyebrows as well. All right, picked up my food from Cosmic Rays. I got their bacon cheeseburger with fries. And then they asked if I wanted produce on the side. So they gave me lettuce, tomato, and onion. And I also asked for extra of the sunny sauce, which is their signature sauce here. It's Thousand Island burger sauce. Every burger restaurant in the world has one. This is a somewhat recent addition to the menu and I'm a big fan. I also couldn't resist this. Despite hating blue colored food, I, I was weak for the Sully slush. It's a blue raspberry slush and then it's got a little pur purple whipped cream in there to look like Sully. It's too cute. How could you not? Dress. Let's go. Here's the thing. I have long said Disney does not do the general quick service burger very well. I think Universal does it better. I think you can find specialty quick service burgers like at Yak and Yeti and Animal Kingdom. They've actually got a Kobe cheeseburger. Much better. This tastes like a generic hamburger that you'd get at like a company barbecue. It's fine. But when you consider the fact that this is the same price as that bowl I had at Animal Kingdom, there's definitely a difference in quality and, and what you're getting. I will say I have always liked Disney's quick service fries. They're like the skinny shoestring fry like McDonald's. And you gotta get the signature sauce because it's got pickles and it's delicious. But now we try the Sully Slush. Oh my gosh, it's so sweet. I don't think it's worth how cute it is. If you like sweet things or your kids like sweet things, it tastes like cotton candy and blue raspberry together. It is incredibly sickly, artificial flavor sweet. I thought it was gonna be more like a slushy than it is, it's like more like an icy, I guess. Not my favorite, but adorable. Credit where credit's due. And I do like their chicken tenders here. Mark number two, restaurant number two, Magic Kingdom complete. Cosmic Grey Starlight Cafe is fine. It's generic theme park food. It's got a great ambiance. I recommend going in at least once to meet Sunny Eclipse. And if you've got really picky eaters or big group kids, I mean, the chicken strips are nice. It's a fine burger. And this is definitely the park that is the weakest for food in general, in my opinion. So there's not a ton of amazingly better options. My personal favorite quick service restaurants here would either be Columbia Harbor House and Liberty Square. They do lobster rolls, I like the grilled shrimp, uh, kind of like a fish and chips, so they do like seafood, they also have chicken nuggets. I also enjoy Pecos Bill's Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, which is in Frontierland, that's Tex-Mex quick service food, but all the actual big quick service restaurants, this park is the weakest by far. For me, when I'm in this park, I'm usually snacking. I like the waffle sandwiches at Sleepy Hollow, I like the spring rolls at the Spring Roll Cart in Adventureland, perhaps corn dog nuggets at Casey's Corner, um, but Cosmic Rays, fine. I understand why it's the most popular, it's the biggest, it's the most generic menu, but for me, not the best one here. But that said, we are headed to the park everyone thinks about with food, so we'll see you at Epcot. We have made it to Epcot, the culinary capital of Walt Disney World. Between the 11 World Showcase pavilions, the basically year-round festivals, Epcot has a lot to offer for foodies, but what's the most popular restaurant? I actually think it might surprise you. However, you know I said my mom's with me, so you know where we're going first. That's right, obviously, Mom and I had to come ride every mom's favorite ride. Soren, currently restored to its OG Soren over California version as part of the D100 100 Years of Magic celebration. 
which is extra fun. As much as I love soaring around the world, it's really fun to throw back to the OG. We're gonna soar in a hand glider over iconic places in California, like the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, obviously, the orange groves is the reason everyone loves this, because that amazing smell. I also love the smell as you go through the mountains of the pine. We're gonna see skiers end our day in Disneyland. Soarin' has a 44.0 inch height requirement, but it's like the most relaxing and beautiful attraction. You've got the wind blowing in your face, the delicious smells wafting in your nostrils, and that's why it's everyone's mom's favorite ride, including mine, who sparked this whole theory. Soaring over California complete, and a big thank you to Caitlin, the cast member who obliged my request for row B1, which is inarguably the best place to sit on Soren. And I don't normally ask since I'm able to ride it frequently, but only the best for mom, am I right? Now, we are headed into the most popular restaurant here at Epcot, which I will say is the hardest one to pick because there are so many locations in Epcot. But historically speaking, it's pretty hard to argue with the big quick service at the front of the park. Even though there are 11 different pavilions with their own quick service locations and there's festivals and things year round, people tend to be drawn to the big quick service location at the front of the park, especially if they've got little ones and they're riding a bunch of rides and then you're like, I need some food now. You're probably not gonna wanna walk all the way to France to go to the bakery. Connections is one of the newest eateries in Walt Disney World. On one half, you've got the Connections Cafe, which is your Starbucks at Epcot. And on this half, you've got the Connections Eatery, which is the quick service restaurant that replaced the electric umbrella. On the menu, you're gonna see a variety of kind of classic theme park foods, a variety of burgers, sandwiches, pizzas, salads, but to Connections credit, they have zhuzhed it up, they have plussed it up, everything is made in house, including things like the pizza crust. So it's definitely gonna be a more elevated experience than some of your other classic quick service locations that serve the same type of food. But even still, is it worth it to stop here at Connections when you're in the park known for festivals and feedings? The Eats have been acquired from Connections, trying to get some of their signature items here, starting with the French Bistro Burger. So this is a gourmet beef blend with caramelized onions, bacon, brie cheese, sauteed mushrooms, Dijon mayonnaise, and a toasted brioche bun. Look at that, gooey, gooey, cheesy. We are definitely looking at a an elevated burger compared to the one at Cosmic Rays, although we have the same French fries. And this, friends, if you can believe it, this is a kid's meal. This giant piece of cheese pizza, the cutie, the coleslaw, and the water, all a kid's meal. I could have gotten fries as one of the sides instead of the slaw or the cutie, but since I got fries at the burger, but I think that is a huge meal for a kid. This is easily could feed an adult, and the adult's portion of the pizza comes with two slices. So portions are looking good here at uh, Connections, but how's it taste? I'm pretty excited about this burger, I'm not gonna lie to you. I love free cheese, and there's a lot. Okay, Connections. I see you. That is definitely a much better burger than Cosmic Rays. You can taste the quality in the patty. There's a ton of that creamy cheese. The bun tastes better. I love mushrooms, so I love the sauteed mushrooms. They've also got a classic American style burger as well as a chicken sandwich. If you're gonna eat a quick service burger in the Disney parks, this is probably the best one. It's the best one I can think of off the top of my head. The only better quick service burger I can think of is at Deluxe Burger at Disney Springs. But in the parks, that's pretty good. Now for this Zabra. The first thing I gotta say, I'm thrilled that it's not puffy pizza. It's nice, crispity crust. Mm. Well, I mean, it's definitely better than puffy pizza, which is what's served at like Pizza Rizzo and Pizza Fari. The crust isn't bad. There's not a ton of sauce, which I prefer. It's just, it almost is like mall pizza, but a little bit better. I'd probably prefer the margarita, which is um, on the adult menu, but I only wanted one piece. So this is fine. It's if your kids want pizza, there you go. The thing is, you could eat this or you could eat a Vietnam. You know what I mean?
there's been a development. I went up to see if they had like packets of red pepper flakes or Parmesan for the pizza. They do not, but they did have a nice sauce collection, including one called Zesty Sauce. No explanation, just a pump with a label that said Zesty Sauce, and I have to know. Oh, she is zesty. I think it's like a burger sauce. It's like a Thousand Island. It's a creamy one though. I like it. Would recommend the zesty sauce for your burger. Here's the thing about Connections Eatery. I really do enjoy it. I think that burger was quite delicious. I think the pizza is better than puffy pizza by a long shot. The desserts there are actually really quite nice. I love the liege waffle. They have a classic one um, that's a liege waffle year round. It's got strawberries and fresh whipped cream and chocolate sauce on it. They'll do seasonal version as well right now for food and wine. It's got Remy and it's like a graham cracker with a cream cheese frosting on it. They are quite delicious. You can tell that this is a higher quality quick service location than somewhere like Cosmic Rays. My problem with this restaurant is it's an Epcot. We didn't need this in Epcot. Epcot already has so many amazing places to eat and drink. And so it's hard for me to be like, yeah, I'm gonna stop by Connections for a pizza when I could go to Via Napoli. And I know people look at Via Napoli and they have sticker shock when they see a $40 large pizza, but that probably has eight slices in it, which actually divides out to be less per slice than the slices here. So for me, I wish this was a Magic Kingdom or I wish they'd taken this menu and put it somewhere like Cosmic Rays because I do think the food's very good. I think the culinary team did an excellent job. And I understand it serves its purpose. If you've got a big family, if you've got picky eaters, again, if you're at the front of the park and you're not feeling like walking all the way to the back of the park, I understand why connections exist. So I can see why this restaurant is very, very popular. But for me, it's not somewhere I'm gonna stop at regularly because I know what lies for me just beyond Friendship Lagoon. It's been a long and wonderful day so far, but we still have one park left. What do you think the restaurant is at Hollywood Studios? Think about it. We'll see you in a second. We've made it to Disney's Hollywood Studios, our fourth and final park of the day to have one more quick service meal. What do you think? Are we headed down Sunset Boulevard into the galaxy far, far away, Handy's backyard, or that section that's near Star Wars, but isn't the Star Wars land, but it's the other Star Wars part. You know what I'm saying? If you guessed Andy's Backyard, you are correct. We are here in Toy Story Land at Woody's Lunchbox. This is the very cute quick service location here that is set up to be Andy's lunchbox packed by his mom. Just why it's so cute in here, just like the rest of this land, but you can see his thermos, you can see the animal crackers, some carrot and celery sticks, some cookies and cheese. It's just adorable. You can even sit on cheese if you want to. It's, it's truly a dream come true in here. On the menu here at Woody's Lunchbox, you've got a variety of sandwiches, including a barbecue brisket melt, a grilled three cheese sandwich. Their signature item is the tachos, which are tater tot nachos. They're also known for their lunchbox tarts, which are like fancy pop tarts and a few specialty beverages. And certainly the reason that Woody's Lunchbox is so popular is one, this land's obviously very popular. Two, the food is normally pretty good. And three, it's very, very small. It's got that exclusivity factor. As you can see, it's pretty tiny in here, which means mobile order spots fill up quick. And if you don't mobile order during most of the day, there's a very long line. So my pro tip for Woody's Lunchbox is mobile order as soon as you get into the park or as soon as you know you're coming here today. I mobile ordered hours and hours ago for our meal today. And then use that edit feature if it ends up not working out. But that way you've locked it in because there's nothing worse than being hangry at going to order Woody's Lunchbox and realizing there's not a spot available for 90 minutes. Final feast of the day. Got production assistant mom coming in hot with the flashlight. Definitely glad I had a partner in crime on this eating adventure today because even though it's been like eight hours and we've been doing lots of stuff in between, still lots and lots of food, but lots and lots of delicious food. From Woody's Lunchbox, picked up the iconic classic tachos. These are potato barrels, as Disney calls them, but to the human world, they're called tater tots. It's got some chili on it. It's got queso. It's got cheese, scallions, and sour cream, and Fritos. There is a plant-based version of this as well. Then I also picked up the kids' meal portion of the iconic grilled cheese. So you get a half of a grilled cheese, you get to pick two sides. I went for more potato barrels and the tomato soup dipper. You can also choose a cutie. Um, and then I got that little baby bottle of water. One of my biggest pro tips is to eat kids' meals in the parks. I mean, look, a half a sandwich, a thing of tater tots, soup, and a drink, that's plenty of food and it's very cost effective, especially if you wanna eat a lot all day. And then I could not resist the seasonal lunchbox tart today because it is pumpkin. And I have not had this one, so I had to. First up, tachos, baby. Let's get everything. Let's get a tater tot cheese, a little sour cream. 
They're pretty good tater tots. A little salty for my taste, but they're crispity crunchy. You've got the chili on there that's got beans in it. And then I love the little bit of heat from the queso, the crunch from the Fritos, and the coolness of the sour cream. You can customize anything of this in the app, though, if you don't want sour cream. If you don't want a certain ingredient, you can always take that off. But these are classic. I will say these are much better enjoyed in the evening time because Andy's backyard is the surface of the sun during daytime, and hot potatoes and cheese isn't always the first thing I want to eat in those temperatures. But quite delicious and very shareable. I'm going to add hot sauce now um, because I like to kick it up even further. Also, I love the breakfast version of the tachos, which has sausage gravy and eggs and cheese on it. And you can get the adult version of the breakfast tachos for under $9. You can get the kids version for under $6, which is definitely one of the best buys. And again, why I say eating kids meals is such a steal. This kids meal was $7 and it includes that drink. I think it's just a very smart and efficient way to maneuver the parks because most of the time it's the same as the adult food, just smaller portions. Let's get into this grilled cheese. It's a nice one, watch this. That does meet my seal of approval for the amount of cheese needed on a sandwich. Dip her in the soup. Hmm. Is it very simple? Yes. Is it better than a normal grilled cheese? Probably also yes. There's three different kinds of cheese in here. There's a garlic buttery spread going on. The bread is nice and buttered and delicious. The soup is hearty and it's got that natural sweetness from the tomato and the basil. This is comfort food at its finest. No, it's not the fanciest or most unique thing you're gonna eat in the parks. So that's kind of my sway against the grilled cheese and tomato soup. But if you've got kids, if you've got picky eaters, we're just looking for something classic. It's delightful. And last, but certainly not least, the seasonal lunchbox tart. It's so cute with the candy corn. Now the thing about the lunchbox tarts are there's normally the raspberry one. That's kind of your all year long one is the raspberry and then they rotate out the other one. So before this, they had a sweet potato pie one that was fantastic. They've done a lemon blueberry, which I like a lot as well. Um, during the Christmas season, they'll often do like a hot cocoa one. They've done apple cinnamon before. They're really, really fun. My pumpkin heart is quite happy with that. What I love about the lunchbox tarts is the crust. It's always buttery, flaky perfection. Pumpkin filling in there. You've got the classic autumnal spices. Now, this may be controversial and shocking. I do think I like the sweet potato pie one a little bit better because it had the same flavor profile, that cinnamon, nutmeg, autumnal spices that you're used to, but it had the candied walnuts on top and I liked that crunch more than the candy corn and I'm not even a candy corn hater. But still, I'm never bad about pumpkin. Well, Woody's Lunchbox, our fourth and final restaurant today. I do really enjoy Woody's Lunchbox. I enjoy this whole land. Toy Story is my favorite Pixar movie, and it's just so cute in here, and I've said it a million times. It's way cuter in here at night, which is just another reason to eat at Woody's Lunchbox after the sun goes down. Do I think Woody's Lunchbox is worth the hype? I could see that if you waited in a long line to purchase your meal, or you're sitting out there in the melting sun, or you weren't able to mobile order for several hours out, and then you get a grilled cheese, I could see where you'd be like, I don't, I don't get the hype. Anyway, I like Woody's Lunchbox. I like a lot of the dishes there. However, I think ultimately this is a good family spot because it's gonna have grilled cheese. It's got a turkey sandwich. It's got baby bell cheese. It's got things that your kids are reliably most likely going to enjoy, but the adults are gonna enjoy their meal as well because of the tachos, because of the brisket or whatever the parents get. So it's a little bit more appealing. Welcome to our fellow toys. Set your hyper drives to hyperactive. Well, your mission here is playtime and lots of it. Roger that Buzz. What I'm trying to say is that unlike other places that have reliable kid-friendly food, like Backlot Express, which is the cosmic rays of this park with burgers and chicken nuggets, like Pizza Rizzo, kids are easily gonna find things that they like. Parents might be less enthused about their meals. I feel like this is a good place for everybody. I do want to give a shout out to ABC Commissary as well, which I think is an underrated quick service restaurant. They completely overhauled the menu and they've got great things like a buffalo chicken grilled cheese, which is very delicious, shrimp tacos, bowls. So that's a good spot as well and would go head to head, I think, with Woody's as far as best overall quick service restaurant in this park. Well, friends, let me know what you think of these popular quick service restaurants in the park. What's your favorite quick service restaurant in Walt Disney World? Drop all of that down in the comments. What should we do next? Let us know that as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and very delicious. Bye. Should we do lounges next?